you've ever been riding in the most picturesque area you've ever been, and then when you look at your footage, all you have is your dash and your windscreen? What about you hop on an awesome bike and you try to have commentary about it and tell people about how great this bike is, only to have wind noise and crackling and hissing and all this garbage noise in the background? What is going on YouTube? One of the X from here, and today I'm going to talk about how to fix those two issues. And in this video, I'm going to go over microphone placement, the type of microphone that I use, as well as how to angle your camera so that you get the best view possible. So stick around. These little tips and tricks are going to help you improve your videos dramatically. So the first thing you obviously have to look at is your helmet. I started with the Shoei RF 1100. And while I like this helmet, is unfortunately is rather heavy to begin with. And you put everything on it and it becomes very heavy and starts to become a workout just to keep your head up. The other thing is there's a ton of wind noise in this helmet and it made it so that it was very difficult to get video out that was worth putting up because of all the wind noise that was in there. It's just terrible. So in came my new daily helmet and vlog helmet. This is the Nex XR.2. It's a little bit better, it's a little bit lighter. And I tell you what, the wind noise inside of here is very minimal and you can tell with my videos. Visor up, yeah, you're gonna have some noise, but you put the visor down and my voice is very clear. Big reason to the clarity is because of playing with the microphone. This took a lot of trial and error. I have many, many, many videos where I had to not use them because the audio took so long to try to dial in and it was just unusable. The reason for this and the reason why this audio is actually a lot better now is because I have this sock and a dead cat over the microphone. It really helps dissipate the wind. The other thing that I did was, see this nose piece here? With this nose piece, it actually directs the wind over the microphone just enough to where it becomes subtle and not irritating. The microphone that I'm using here is a Purple Panda microphone and I honestly think it's a great microphone. You just take a listen. All right, so this is a good test of my helmet and the mic position doing 80 on a highway. There's still wind noise, but with the positioning of my microphone and the quality of this Purple Panda microphone. That's right, going down the highway at 70 miles an hour is very clear. Is there wind noise? Absolutely, but it's nothing that's gonna make it distracting to your video. Now I know this isn't the most beautiful setup I've ever you've ever seen, but you know what, it really doesn't matter because it works really well. So what I have here is the microphone adapter for the Hero 7. I used gaffer tape, taped around the actual adapter, and then I used adhesive and the Velcro. Smashed them together, got two pieces of Velcro on here, and she is stable. At speeds, this doesn't wobble or anything. The extra tape is kind of for aerodynamics. Also, the cable here for the microphone kind of comes up and over, and I wanted to tape that down so it wasn't flapping around too much. Chase on Two Wheels has an amazing setup that he did, I think like two years ago, where he uses a flat mount here, and a another piece here and then a link that comes a link that comes like this pretty much like a v and it can set the camera back the problem i had with that was i had a hero 4 and the extra linkages caused the camera to vibrate just enough to where you can see it in your footage and i wasn't a fan of that so i stuck with the j hooks the problem that i had with this helmet was the peak of the chin was actually kind of far out and there's a good point there so the regular curved mounts that gopro comes with wasn't gonna work. So what I did to work around this is I got a flat mount, I got a heat gun, and I started to warm up this mount a little bit, obviously off of the helmet. And as I warmed it up, I was falling around the corner of like a desk and I used it actually on my counter. And the more and more I formed it, the more and more it fit this curve here. Yes, I know it doesn't look the greatest. And I tell you what, Motorrad makes an awesome one where they have that centerpiece and they have two pieces that come out on either side here. And that is probably the ideal mount to use. I've also seen ones that were, they were like straps to go over and it kind of made it look like you had an adult sex toy strapped to your face. So uh, yeah, I didn't want to use that one. Not only that, but it's so big that it blocks these vents here. And most homes are gonna have these types of vents and they're really not just for your face, for airflow, but it's really for your visor. And I don't want to block those vents because when it gets a little cool out, it's gonna start fogging up the visor really bad. Now the reasoning for this J mount that I've used for a long time is because of this range of motion that you have with the camera. When you're riding, you're like this. So if your camera's pointed down like this, what you're gonna have is, you know, your dash and your windscreen. But with it being upside down, you can rotate it out like this. You can actually look over your speedometer. Think about that, look over your speedometer. Don't let everyone know how fast you're going. I mean, it's cool, I do it, but 
Sometimes you don't want everybody to know, right? Huh? I hope those tips and tricks will help you out in the long run to help make your audio and video a little bit better. On the next video, I'm going to go over what I use when I'm off the bike. The camera mounts, the gimbals, the different microphones that I use. And kind of, again, when you guys do off-bike vlogs to make them the best they can be. So stay tuned for that. I hope you all have a good one. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content like this. You all have a good one. I'm out.